Hi, and welcome to our latest Redmond review. I'm Chris Garlock, and with me in studio, Michael Redmond himself. Hi, nice to meet you. Michael, yeah. welcome. It's a, a real treat. Uh, Michael is here in Washington for the opening uh, tomorrow of the new National Go Center. So yeah, yeah. Really looking forward looking to that. Looking forward to that, yeah. Getting it launched in style. Uh, so he literally just got here. I mm -hmm. picked him up at the airport. We drove mm -hmm. through Washington's horrendous traffic. Yeah, yeah. It's different, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's one word for it. Yeah. I think it probably took us almost as long to get home mm. from the airport as it took you to fly from California. Not quite, not okay. quite, yeah. Uh, anyway, he's here in studio. We're very happy to have him in here. Uh, we are calling this the uh, uh, the White Burgundy uh, special because we so indeed... So that's this, right? That yeah. is this. Yeah, cheers. A, cheers. Uh, you can drink it off. I'll go ahead for a second. Um, uh, not, we're just going to promote the region in general. It's a wonderful wine. It yes. is. And, and it will get better over the course of this uh, commentary. Uh, as I'm sure your commentary will improve yes. even as it goes I hope along. So. And, well, and sometimes that's an illusion, though. I know. I'm I think I play say, yeah. better as I, as oh, I yeah, have more an wine, illusion. and I'm sure it's an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, uh, we're very glad that uh, you could join us and uh, happy to have Michael here yes. uh, in person. Um, in a few weeks, uh, we are going to be going to China. I believe so, yes. And, um, yeah, if everything works out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we will have another commentary uh, coming up. Uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, about that. But uh, why don't uh, we go ahead and dive into this one. Who's our player? Okay, this time I'm going to be doing a game with Ghoulie against Master. Okay. Um, and Ghoulie, he played a number of games in the 60 game series. Um and he's interesting in that he's, he, he tried a lot of various styles. Like he tried the big Moyo strategy. Mm -hmm. um, he tried um, playing Master's moves against itself. Like he was playing the shoulder hits and stuff. Um, and in this game, he's actually, he has white stone. So Guli has white and he's playing more orthodox style, I might okay. say. But, um, it gets into a big fight uh, right in the beginning of the game. So it, um, it's really interesting in the earlier parts. Um, but we, we'll see again how Master is really good at turning the game into his favor and just sort of running away with it. All right, let's yeah. take, a, take a look at it. Okay, we're starting with um, Master's, one of Master's favorite openings here. Um, and like I always say, when this move that White just played, the lower left corner is a 3-4 point. Uh, let, let's just make the variation. When it's like this, um, usually Master's seems to play this move. Mm -hmm. um, in most cases, in the professional games played in this 60 game uh, series, uh, let's see, here's my tool. Um, this this stone, of course, was the star point here. Right. So th there's that difference, but um, apart from that, this is the move. So probably even in this position, I would sort of expect Master to play here, although I don't think I've seen that um, this opening. Okay. Um, so when White plays the star point, then it, it can vary a little bit more. Um, it's quite often Mar Master plays this two-space high Um uh, And this is a move that is... Um, it's one of the moves that has been played less even after Master uh, came on the scene um, over the New Year's uh, because it's a bit more difficult to make this work. work. Like, um, this Shimari here is relatively easy to make work. Like, there's a lot of players who played this um, before Master started playing it. Mm -hmm. So it was a, already a kind of an established move um, like you could probably find one in 20 players who sort of like this move. Like I played this move, for instance. Mm -hmm. Any player who likes to um, play big in the opening uh, likes it's, this move. It's very fast. Whereas like there's one or two players in Japan who played this move and probably even fewer in, in China and Korea. Um, so it's a pretty unusual move. It's difficult because there's a tendency to be um, falling behind territory. I think I might even have... Yeah. I put this variation into the SGF file. Again, there, for this game, there is an SGF file okay. with all the variations. Um, this is Obviously, White's not going to do this right yet, but um, this is an example of one way White can try to invade into the corner. So this corner territory is not really secure um, as it happens. So one thing that Black is going to be trying to do is as the fighting on the right side and maybe the lower side continues, Black's going to try to make this officially um, efficiently Black's territory. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, uh, white place here. This is a kind of a waiting move. Um, this move has become more and more popular um, in recent years. In in the old times, white would be playing um, something like this right. on the right side. Just split the side oh. immediately. Mm -hmm. And of course, oh, oh man, um, the player from Taipei, I think, um, he, he's he's a player who's um, who likes to play this opening every so often. So he's one of the few players in Japan um, who actually plays this opening with black. And so you see the, this kind of position in his games a lot. And he, he just goes on the attack immediately and tries to bully white on the right side of the board. And then, then the fight sort of spreads to the rest of the board. So he's the player who can he, he can use this, but it's still when O Man plays this way, it, it looks like it's really difficult and hard to emulate. Whereas Master seems to make it easy. Um, again, we see a very typical Master type move. The shoulder hit. Um, I find it really interesting, and I don't fully understand why Master does not play uh, like something like this on the right side would be a natural move. Sure. Um, of course, the upper left corner. Uh, an approach to the upper left corner would be normal too, so something like this, for instance. Um, moves like this would be moves that sort of spring to mind. Um, and so I don't, although there's nothing wrong with this move, I um, still don't fully understand the necessity of playing it right now. And as some people say, the master does not necessarily have to play the optimal move. Like it's, Maybe it's not playing the highest percentage, but at this point of the game, um, I would assume that the possibility for winning is still somewhere around 50 percent okay um even if master might be a, a a bit optimistic it would still be thinking it's maybe has maybe it would be thinking it has slightly more than 50 percent but it doesn't really i don't expect it to be changing its style um over two or three percentage points like i, th I think after about 60 percent winning percentage then um mm -hmm. master goes into a kind of a safe um, safe mode, or, or can go into the safe mode, because um, that's a sizable difference. So just playing one one kataski here, this one shoulder hit, Master switches. So this is actually pretty unique in Master's games, to play just the shoulder hit once, and not to jump. Like, um, in almost all cases, it's going to be playing this jump here. Right. right. Um, whereas you might see some human players, such as Gosegen, playing the extension here. Um, leaving this is a very light move, and it's hard to say whether this exchange is going to be good for black or not. It's like it depends on how the rest of the game develops, and you'll you'll see this come into play pretty quickly. Uh, white plays the pincer naturally, yes, and again we see a, a master favorite move. So we already have seen three moves that are sort of um, master style. Master moves. Yeah. I, I like. I still like to call it master. I know that the people at Google are calling it AlphaGo still. Um, but it is sort of distinctly different from the AlphaGo that played at least at all. Right. And so that's why I like to call it master. And also, you know, I think that AlphaGo, um, uh, the Chinese, in Chinese it sounds more like the name of a dog or something. <laughs> and so um, they were sort of making fun of it at first. But after Chinese. it got yeah, but after it got so strong, I think they felt more comfortable calling it the master. Mm. Yeah. And now, now black jumps. Now comes the jump. And so this is has the double purpose of expanding black's moyo on the right mm. side and reducing white's moyo on the left side. So it, it is, um, it's a kind of an ideal move. Um, obviously, no no human played this way before. So it's really hard to say whether it's actually working or not. But you can see what black the meaning of black's moves is to expand the right side and reduce white's left side. Um, and if black does get to play, we see white immediately invades of the course, right side. Yes. If do, black does get to play on the right side like this, now it's going to be a kind of an ideal. The, the marked stone there is going to work well. And these stones in the upper left that black has left alone, um, one can sort of see that master is thinking of that black group is fairly secure right because it can move into the corner still and it's sort of pressing white on the top side so it's, it's actually pretty difficult for white to get a severe attack on these stones so in many games in the whole 60 game series we'll see that master just leaves those stones for a while and apparently has no trouble handling any attacks that white might try and just the fact that white's so low on the upper side it make it makes it so white it takes more time for white to set up an attack against us. So. so I'll ask a question, mostly just to give you a chance, because I know you want yeah, to yeah. see how the white is developing. Uh, it's a very nice white, and it will continue to develop. Uh, as this game, 
is developing. Yeah. Um, so you had mentioned that that of course you know this is not a move we've seen from human players before, right. and so talk a little bit about that. Well, you see, um, it uh, there were some players in the Edo era, that so that's hundreds of years ago, mm. who played like big Moyo style, like some of the. Um, after a few um, generations into the um, Edo era, there were some players who liked to play for a big moyo, like Le- like Letsugen or um, Genjo, some of the Hoingbo family. Mm-hmm. Um, and they could get away with it because they, they sort of had an advantage in the opening. Um, it was really interesting, that era, because they had um, these schools of Go, which were very secretive. Um, four, four schools of Go that were supported by the government. And they were very secretive about their game, so they weren't really allowed to play with each other, with other schools. And so they would have their own special openings. Um, which, and which they had studied intensively. They studied intensively, of course, because uh, they didn't have to make a living. They were um, sponsored by the, the government. So the, all they had to do was study Go. So they did that all the time. But this wasn't unique to Go. This would have been the same in a martial art. I mean, I mean martial this, arts, Japanese tea ceremonies, flowers, um, anything that they called an art. They uh, was at that in that era. It was sponsored by the government. But I also mean in terms of sort of specializing and mm-hmm. maybe secret. I mean, this was this was a, and in China as well. You know, you, I, I studied Tai Chi, and in Tai Chi, you'd have uh-huh. I mean, this stuff was not written down. Right, it was right. orally transmitted. Mm-hmm. Very secretive. Mm-hmm. Well, in, in in China and Japan, I think that the pattern is when the country is um, peaceable, when they stop um, fighting each other, then they can settle down and all this culture sort of blossoms right. and it gets much better. Um, and so you you see the Hoimbo family seem to have an advantage throughout the whole era in opening. Mm. Um, and so that's why they could get away with um, moves that are pretty difficult to make them work. But um, there were a few of the Hoimbo leaders who did really well with big moves like this. But then in more modern times, as the time limits started to come up, so we had less time to think about the game, I think pe- people become less comfortable with this kind of style. So you see more, you see fewer players. Um, to make it work, you have to have the whole board situation very well planned. Yeah. And there can't be any holes in your plan. So like one mistake will, the whole board situation will go completely awry. It just doesn't work. And the damage done by that in this kind of game is much bigger. Right. So there's some more danger there. Um, so pe- players tend to um, move towards territory. They, they tend to like territory more and more. And especially, I think, the Koreans and then uh, the Chinese even more were very successful with this territorial-oriented game up to the point that they, they found it didn't work against Master. Right. Uh, like it was very recent that they were very, extremely successful by taking just taking territory and they could jump into their opponent's moyo afterwards. No problem. Well, let's see what happens here because it gets pretty exciting pretty quickly. Well, um, Guli is actually pretty unusual among the Chinese players because um, uh, he has a, an opening that is much more uh, well-balanced. Mm. Um, and so he doesn't really go for territory um, as much as many Chinese players do. Um, and, and that's sort of marked in this movie. He, he does like to have the whole board well balanced and um, not too much into, like, he, he, he would not take the territory like this. Um, and though it's a bit, um, it's a kind of a greedy move just taking the territory, trying to take territory on the left side and assuming that you can re- reduce the whole moyo. Um, but he's, he's not the type of player who would think of that kind of move. And so Black jumps in. Now Black's trying to attack the Mark Stone there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Black has a loose connection. Um, we can see that when White plays here, these marked Black Stones are not completely alive. And so White's sort of hoping to attack Black in the upper left, as well as hoping to um, do something about the marked Black Stones there. So Black plays here. And the meaning of this move is that Black um, wants to uh, strengthen the connection. So we'll see how that happened first. And I'm going to go back to this move because um, this turned out to be a bit painful for White. Uh, White did, did cover the corner. This is necessary. And now now Black has um, made a fairly good connection to the center. Beautiful. And, of course, the corner is still big. So White plays once here to take Sente. But this whole exchange here was a bit painful um, because although White got Sente, Black can uh, capture the one stone in the corner. And that's going to be a huge. That's going to be big for territory, and it's also 
giving him eye space on the left side. So um, basically, the whole black group in the lower left here is very strong now. Mm. There's no way white can attack it. Um, so I would go back to this move here and say maybe white should have just been gone for the territory by playing here. Right. Um, this kind of thing, locally, I would expect that white can get the territory. Like if black is going to try something like this, um, this doesn't really look like it's going to work because black's not alive in the corner mm -hmm. yet. And um, white has the escape here. Mm -hmm. uh, the lower side is still open. So white stone, it's going to be difficult for black to get white stones there. Uh, and black needs um, needs some more moves in the corner to live. Yeah. So um, this looks like white can handle this variation. Um, so I would just play here. Uh, and if we assume black is going to sacrifice, like if something like, uh, like this happened maybe, um, I guess we could have this happen and, and this kind of thing. Um, this is not so much profit for black, and black still does not have a perfect position here. Mm. So I would prefer this variation for white. Um, in the game white um, played here, with this move white has the idea that maybe he's um, weakening black in the center. Mm -hmm. But white does have to cover the corner once. So when black plays here, actually black has a better position in the center. So already the game is sort of starting to look dangerous for white. Um, this is locally a key point, a vital point in black shape. Um, the idea is that black is forced to play, if black is forced to play here, white can take the corner. And this is also a very important point that takes away the eyes mm -hmm. of black's whole group. Without this um, stone on the 3-3 point, black would be able to play there to make a, a life in the corner. <clears throat> so the idea is to induce black to play here and take away the corner eyes. Um, black uh, refuses to answer. Now, um, I'll show how that works. Like, for instance, if white, um, yes, I do have this variation. White pushes through the cut here. Um, black can cut on, on the upper side. Um, oh, nice. Now, uh, okay, taking on the right side, I sort of put this variation in. It's probably pretty obvious right. after we get this far right. Right. that white's going to die. <clears throat> So um, in this variation, black's going to get a good position on the upper side. And white needs one more stone to kill that stone. Right. Those two stones there. And so something like this would happen. Um, so this would not be completely um, bad. White has captured those stones. <clears throat> um, but black does have a nice position on the upper side. Um, and white is not completely alive on the right side. So black's probably going to get territory on the upper side. And probably the lower right. Um, well, white's only significant ter territory is in the upper left, so that's something like um, almost 30 points. But white's not going to get much more territory elsewhere. So, um, so white doesn't do that. So white continues here. And so for the basically for the same reasons, black can um, force all these moves before handling the cutting point on the left. It was it, it basically the same variation. So now black pushes through and cuts. So with this timing, um, it's hard for white to choose really. Like if white takes this side, um, mm. now black will protect there, but there's the cut at A, which will lead to forcing moves at mm -hmm. B. Um, one of the forcing moves is B, otherwise the black can force from above with C. Uh, a cut of a cut, cutting point at A, will, having that with Sente, will make a lot of difference on the outside fight. <clears throat> so white plays on the outside. In this case, uh, white can win the, the fight in the corner. So um, black is just leaving that to protect. Now you see the cor these zones here are connected. Um, when white pushes through and cuts, uh, that actually has filled one of white's liberties, so it doesn't work for white. Um, otherwise, as it stands, of course, black cannot kill, capture the white stones. Like, if black does this now, white's going to be okay. White can just capture... White's going to win this. Ouch. Um, but the, the very... Um, a, in, in the action of um, filling this... This, this uh, pushing through and cutting here fills a liberty right. for white. Right. So that's why white cannot do that. And so at, uh, it's kind of a local stalemate there. Both sides cannot really accomplish very much. Um, and so black is playing here, taking away white's eye space, basically, on the left side. Um, now, white in the game white played here, 
Now, this was a very important move in that it uh, turned the game really bad for White. So it was really? actually, I think it was a bad move. Um, up until now. Up until now, like, I sort of don't like the way White played in lower, lower left. Right. And so I would prefer to play with black, but it's probably not decisive. Uh, so I, this is a point where I'd be interested to see what percentage of a winning percentage uh, Master is giving itself, because I would suspect that it would be um, a few percentage points above 50% now. So, one But of I those, don't know how far. One of the things I should mention, again, giving you a chance yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what, what, one of the things that we're really hoping is that when we're uh, in China for this next uh, for this next match between uh, 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 Master and Tijet, did I say that uh, right? No, you didn't say it. I don't think you said it. That's a completely... Thank you. Uh, I'm, 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 I can't we say We got a it. lesson from yeah, our producer, Justin yes, Tang, yeah. who was asking uh, us. But we're not going to say it correctly anyway. You were going to say it in Japanese. Oh, kaketsu is the yeah. way Japanese say it. That's, that, they, it's a, since they mm. share the written language, mm. the Japanese just naturally have their own way of pronouncing all of these Chinese names. Mm. Which, from the Chinese viewpoint, is probably not correct. But, uh, <laughs> uh, so. In any case, it's going to be a terrific match, and we're really looking forward to it. Uh, but one of the things that we're really hoping this time is that we will be allowed behind the uh, curtain so that you get a chance, you know, as you yeah, were hoping last year, to see some of these percentages. Well, I just uh, want a one PC version of that. <laughs> I, I take it home with me. <laughs> uh, we'll put the request in yeah. to, uh, <laughs> to AlphaGo. Yeah. Uh, but but I think that you know the the question I think is really interesting is mm -hmm. it what because the uh, film AlphaGo is out now and we do get in the film uh, to mm -hmm. go behind the scenes and yes. see this and you get to see the screens with mm -hmm. the percentages and I know you're going to be on the edge we're showing it. Uh, uh, well, there are some other AIs that are um, not as good as Master, um, like Zen in Japan, mm -hmm. and there's um, Fine Art as they are calling it in English in China, mm -hmm. um, and so. Sometimes those are actually showing some of the backs, uh, behind the scenes percentages that they're giving themselves. Right. And there's um, on online there's this free soft called Leela, which is not not as good, but it does have all all of the potent potential winning percentages that it's giving itself. So you can look at that; it's really interesting. Right. Um, and looking at these um, programs, I get the feeling that if they get up to about sixty percent percentage of winning. That's, that's just good enough. It's, it's going to be good enough to... to right. But if it's something like up to 55%, maybe it's just... Me, well, in the case of Leela, maybe it's just misreading. But um, uh, but that's that could be my crummy PC also, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, I, I think that it's within the um, possibility of a mistake on the AI's or, yeah, 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 right. or just um, a kind of opinion. But especially if it's just two or three percent. But these things are clearly. I mean, you know, AlphaGo Master mm -hmm. is clearly already there. Mm -hmm. It is very clear that the version we saw in January is much stronger than the version we saw last year. I know that the version we see in China will be even stronger, yeah. and so clearly that means that that the this is all going up. It's, up, it's up. beyond the top human players already, and it's, yeah. it's going to be. We're going to learn a lot from it if we get the chance. It's, um, Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. All right, back to the game. Okay, I was here. So black is taking away white's eye space. And as I showed, white cannot cut black off as it is. Um, and um, and black is making some eyes uh, for the black group too. So um, white pushed through here. Uh, uh, we'll see how that didn't work. But first of all, um, I would suggest that white plays here. Sure. Now this threatens to cut black off. Like uh, let, black has two choices here. Um, if black plays here, now black's connected. Mm-hmm. So that's that's okay, but it's a bit it's a dummy point sort of, so it's a bit painful. White will just jump here. Um, otherwise, um, if black doesn't want to connect there, black has to do something on the left side. So maybe something like this. Um, but you you can see that white has cut black off now, mm -hmm. and um, so I would have this kind of con continuation. Um, after this, you see. Um, this is much better for the for white than the game because white has has the corner territory in the upper left. Black has got a little bit extra on the left side, but black was already pretty strong there. Like as I said, the lower left corner exchange has made that black group strong already. Mm -hmm. So white can give black the left side. Black has a nice territory there, but white got Sente to play the right side. Mm. And black's center group, white's group is connected, so 
later on white will have opportunities to attack black in the center. And white has something in the vicinity of 30 points, and black has more than 20 points on the left side, but then the rest of black's territories, like I, I was saying in the beginning, black's territory in the lower right is not really it's a territory, territory, territory it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not territory yet. So um, white would still be in the game, um, just like because uh, the shape in the lower left is a bit painful. I, I would maybe I would have a tendency to want to play with black, um, but it's not a big difference. So this is a case where I'd be interested to see um, that the percentage the percentage that master was giving itself. It would um, it would be not so far from fifty percent. Is my my guess. Um, but white did, did play here. Now this gave black an opportunity to scoop out the corner like. Um, this in this variation, black doesn't have full eye space, mm, mm. and what the corner is white's territory. When white did this, um, probably hoping hoping that black would answer on the left side or something, uh, black took took this opportunity oh, to scoop out the corner. Nice. And now this is really big as far as eyes is, eyes are concerned, um, because now um, there's no way that black white can take the corner away from black. Like the the best local move. Um, even if white pushes through here, um, cutting doesn't really work because black can play this right. Atari Vicente. Right. So white would probably play, usually the end game move would be to play here, but yeah, we but can see that white's sort game. of, um, to, white's falling behind in the attack here. Mm -hmm. And so black has some potential ice space in the corner there. Um, and white can't really gain much on the side there. Mm. Like white could push through and capture the two stones. It would so be well. very, it, it would be sort of fruitless to take those two stones in such a, such a manner. It's not very um, good looking, is right. it? So um, in the game, White pushes through. With this move, Gooley is trying to fix his shape. Um, but you know, even though he fixed his shape, he still doesn't have eyes. Um, so at this point, the game is already uh, decisively good for Black. I would be sort of expecting to see Master's percentages for winning going up right. pretty quickly at this point. Like just in uh, it could have. I'd be interested to see if it sort of, sort of suddenly happened the moment uh, White played the here. Turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I would sort of suspect that it sort of, uh, it might be more gradual as as the sequence extended mm, to something mm. like this. I, I'd, I'd expect to see it move up. And these are things that are really interesting because um, I think that the positional judgment of these computers is really good. Mm. The AIs and. Um, in all of the other AIs that are not quite as strong as Master is, um, the positional judgment is still always seems to be a strong point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so the positional judgment is something that humans can start out, take as a starting point, and then we can sort of play with play with the position mm -hmm. to, to figure out how, what moves we think are good. Because um, we don't always have to agree with the AI, even though it's stronger than most humans now. Um, so we can get inspired by these moves, and it will be extra, inf very, very valuable extra information to, to know what percentage the computer is well, giving the, the itself. The sequence here was just so elegant. Uh, well, um, I for, think for, that, for, for, yeah, for, for White, this move was a um, pretty unusual mistake, I think. Mm, um, and I would attribute it to the fact that they are playing a quick game, like sure. a, a time limit. Sure. And the computer usually can find its moves um, I don't really know if they they were playing at 30 seconds or shorter, um, but um, even if they're playing at 30 seconds, the, the computer probably doesn't use that much time. Right. Um, so the time limit is easy for it, but it is sort of uh, challenging for even a top human player. So White plays this connection. Um, I think this move is kind of a sign that uh, Gooley knows that he's already in trouble, mm -hmm. and so he's just um, trying to keep some territorial lead mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because it's not it's not it's slightly unreasonable. Um, white is re weakening the black group in the hope that maybe white can make a counterattack at some point, but it, it's not really uh, likely to happen. I don't think. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank. Black has to mess up a bit for that to happen, so it's it's not really a reasonable move. Oh, Running just, away just in the center would be more reasonable. Black has not shown any capacity for messing up. In yeah, any ma yeah, Master doesn't seem to mess up. Right. Unless he's going to win anyway. And he's uh, not messing and, up. You know, he's just sort of like... According to Master, that doesn't seem to count. Right. 
So um, this point is sort of an example of why this move isn't going to work. It's, it, Black has to be careful not to be playing too far away because Black doesn't want this group in the lower left to be attacked. So Black's sort of protecting the lower left group while um, putting pressure on white on the left side. And the value of this move is that Black, um, it not only does it um, is it sort of loosely connected to the lower left area, it's also going to more or less hem white in from getting out in the center. So so that's the whole point here, to, to surround white on the mm. left side, even if white manages to live. Master very rarely goes for the kill. Um, so white is sort of, has a very uh, narrow exit into the center here. Um, and master is just forcing white to play dummy points. Like, at this point, obviously white can connect up um, and get out, but it's just too painful. So uh, Guli now is um, placed here, sort of um, hoping to counterattack maybe, mm -hmm. um, or maybe to just make some eyes on the other side. There's all that Fontiagi through the connection. They're, there. they're not connected as they are. Right. Um, but instead of connecting at the mark point, nice. uh, this is taking away White's eye space and getting some extra territory. So while Master often seems to be ignoring territory in the opening parts of the game, um, you find that as the fighting develops, Master is very good at taking territory. Um, in this case, while attacking. So he is very, very good at attacking. And so white is sort of out, but this is very f fruitless for white. It's not really... White's not getting much out of it. And black still plays the capping move here. Um, and white is, white stone's getting away. Like, white does have some uh, a very small area there to get out into the center. Um, but the, the right side, that one stone there is looking a bit lonely. Black does have some territory on the left side, so... White's territorial advantage, like White has something more than 10 points, less than 50 points, less than 15 points in the lower left corner. And something like that in the upper left corner also. So White has less than 30 points mm -hmm. in the territory. Um, black has um, less than 20 points on the, right, on the left side. And so it's only about 10 points difference in territory. Um, and again, Black has all of these stones, uh, all this influence towards the center of the board. Which is going, to, which is worth about that much. So, just looking at that one area of the board, black is already catching up. And now, now this move is beautiful. Actually, this kind of move you see a lot in human games too. It's not, not, not special to the AI, but it's just perfect time to use it. Like, black's not really sure whether he wants to um, surround the center or not. There's not really enough room in the center for black to be using one move on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but black sort of wants to add to the center there also black sort of worried about the lower right corner which is not territory yet right. and once white has played this two space extension white's alive on the right side so attaching against these white stones now that they are alive um, and trying to make them into a kind of an over concentrated situation if white plays this side black's going to play the honey here and start building on the center so this would be building more towards the center of the board um, in the game, white doesn't like that. White plays towards the center. Um, so now black's going to be able to surround the uh, lower right corner. This, this lower right, right corner is looking more and more like it could become territory. Hmm. And of course, white's territory on the right side is more or less disappeared. So uh, this is a move you see strong players play a lot, um, but it's in the perfect position to play it now. It's the perfect timing. Um, an example of how in the middle game, master is... Um, less original and that um, I think it's more easy to find brand new moves in the opening that mm -hmm. we don't sure. really know so much about um, so it's not, it's not such an original move but it's just it's just plain strong you might say it's a, well I mean it's, a, the, it's playing good moves that these are in the middle game I think we, it's safe to say that there are moves that we can sort of think of it's, humans can conceive of these moves also and can understand them better than some of the moves that Master plays in the opening. Well, I mean, this goes along with what you pointed out before, and actually what you see in the film AlphaGo, which is that at this point, the hot spots, and you know, much less true in the opening, but mm -hmm. the hot spots are very clear. It's pretty limited, yeah. Like, the, in this game, the upper right corner is not going to be much territory anyway, but it's, 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 it's going to be one of the hot spots. But the lower area and the center are also going to be hot spots, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. And those are things that would be interesting to see, too. They're, they're very, well... Although they would just reinforce our own 
positional judgments sometimes. Mm. But um, I'm sure there would be a lot of surprises too. Yeah. And so after um, this exchange just sort of strengthens um, the lower right corner. But since white did play invest a lot towards the center, um, black's not going to be very interested in surrounding your center now. So black leaves that um, and is basically satisfied that the lower right corner is reinforced now. Mm -hmm. So at this point, the game is pretty one-sided. Like, um, I was saying that white had something like 10 points advantage in territory. Right. And just looking at the right side of the board, uh, that looks like it's going to be more than 10 points. Absolutely. So let's just go through the moves now. Let's see. Um... I didn't even put very many variations. Black's sort of still chasing the white stones because, of course, this white group in the center of the board is not fully alive. Not quite alive, yeah. Um, like it has, a, it sort of has an eye on the on the left side there, the connection there. Uh, like white can um, white can force with this move. Right. Um, this exchange would give white an eye in that area, but white doesn't really have the second eye yet. Um, so it's not completely alive. Um, it's probably wise for black not to really try to attack it very severely because mm. black has some problems too. So it, it's very characteristic of master that it's not trying to um, launch an all-out attack against white, but just sort of letting white... It doesn't, it doesn't need to. It doesn't need to. It knows it doesn't need to. Yeah. But now that white has moved to the lower side, this is kind of the perfect splitting attack here. Um, it's just getting just painful for white after this. It's, and now you see, um, at this point, white is desperate. And this move is not going to really work. But, you know, white has to try something. Right. And we can see white's trying to get a kind of a squeeze here. Um, Master's not really trying to do anything about it. Like, this is a very, this move here, uh, uh, clamping the one stone there, gives black a very solid shape in the center. Mm -hmm. um, it, it gets rid of any possibility of white counterattacking there because now all of black stones are connected. Right. It's it's going to it's um, taking away any possibility. Like after this mo move, it's going to be relatively easy since black stones are all connected to play this move to take away white's eye and sente. So when when the necessity comes to kill the white group, black will be able to play this move, forcing white to connect and take away the eye with sente. And so this move allows that to happen next. So white has to really worry about this center group. Now. I'm worried about it. I'm but uh, Guli doesn't have the time to do that. So Guli is still aye, trying aye. to get something extra. Um, we can see again Master is just letting Guli get away with it. Uh, Master doesn't. And the end result here, um, just from what I said a few moves ago, I was saying that it looked like Black had some territory here. What, now it, it looks even more so, like it's more than 20 points. Yeah, it's almost 30. It's it's something like 25 points on the, in the lower right. Right. And white's territory is not really increased very much. That's that's just because white did not have eyes to start with. And although Master did not press the attack, uh, there was that potential weakness there. <laughs> and Jeez. so we can see white's getting more and more uh, desperate here. And it's, yeah, it's just... Um, and Master doesn't have to do it. Well, let's just cruise through the final moves. Um, it's really neat how Master just, just finishes, plays just finishes simply, the game. simply. Um, and again, it looks so easy when Master does it, yeah. but a human player would have the tendency to, to get into a mess somewhere. But it doesn't happen at any point. Like In the end, um, White gets a bit unreasonable. White didn't really have any chance, so... The end result is that White's uh, actually going to lose this, these few stones in the upper light. Upper Arr. Light. And um, and didn't manage to get a counterattack. And fine, this is the final position. And the reason White resigns here, I believe this is where White resigned. Yes, yeah. um, is that next uh, Black can play here to, and uh, <laughs> the move that Black just played saved the vital stones there. So White still doesn't have eyes. So White still has to worry about that stone on the left side of the board. Wait, wait, the, wait! The, big dragons group. never die. Well, they do if they don't have eyes. <laughs> um, so white still has to put a stone in there to connect. <laughs> they won't die, but it does not. It's just enough. too painful. Uh, it, it was just too much uh, to bear because white's way high, way behind in territory too. 
And so I'm, yeah, I actually went to the end of the game this time. Oh my gosh! That must I, be I, the I, wine. I, viewers are going to be so <laughs> happy. <laughs> you see but what you, a little white yeah, burgundy will you do. You can see how yeah, it gets sadder and sadder. My commentary was really just about finished after I finished talking about this movie. Um, but um, and, and, the and, way Master wraps it up, and it it does it this way every time. So the way Master wraps it up is very um, it's educational. It really it, is. It's really um, neat to look at it. It looks really easy. I, I, this is the thing I will tell you that, and you know, uh, I've tried to do this, and it never, it never goes well. Well, you get into it's, trouble usually. I get humans, into trouble every time. Have, I think the positional judgment that it, once it gets it right, it, it, its positional judgment continues to be correct throughout the end yeah. game. And um, positional judgment is really important, and right. I think master is an example of that because I think a lot of its strength is because of its good positional judgment. Wow. All right. Well, we need to recharge these glasses for our uh, next... We have uh, one more game coming. One more game coming up. So thank you, Michael. It's really good to be in the the same space. Uh, And uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, I promise we will make sure we get the SGF file up at the same time as the game. That's on me. It's not on... uh, our producers or any of the other folks that are involved. That was totally me. So uh, direct your ire at me. Uh, So, but thank you, Michael. Thank you for watching. Uh, And a big, big thank thank you to Justin Tang, who is our producer here uh, also uh, in studio. So thanks to Justin for taking the time to do this. Uh, That'll do it for this commentary. Thanks again. Thank you.